Hi everybody! Today we learn together how to create a dynamic geographical map. In recent years, printed circuit board manufacturers have made it possible, at increasingly affordable costs, to produce PCBs of different shapes, thicknesses and colors. I thought of using this possibility to draw together a PCB with the shape of my nation, Italy, and to transform it into a dynamic map. Thanks to 20 RGB LEDs, one for each region of Italy, it will be possible to view various information. Given the current period, I have chosen to represent the number of new daily cases of COVID-19, retrieving the information from the official GitHub repository of our civil protection. In the first part of the video, I will show how to make the PCB, while in the second, I will analyze the Arduino sketch to download the data from the Internet and to control RGB LEDs. In the description of this video, you can find the link to the GitHub repository where I uploaded all the files to make the project, and also the links to download the software that I will use. First, we need to get a map of Italy. The ideal is to find it already in vector format, but often only bitmap images are available. Since I want to represent individual regions, I choose one that also has their outlines. To prepare the image, I will use two free Windows programs, Paint.net and Inkscape. Let's open the image with Paint.net. We want to create a single PCB. The two islands must therefore be connected to the rest of Italy. I also need a base to make the board stand vertically and where to place the connector for power and data. I need two images, one with just the board outline and one with also the region outlines, which I will use for the silk screen. To get the first one, with the eraser tool I then delete all the lines that do not belong to the outline. The two images are now ready to be vectorized. Let's import the first one in Inkscape. Then select Path, Trace Bitmap. It is very important to select the center line tracing mode to have a single line that follows the outline of the image. Click OK and after a few moments the image is vectorized. The vector version is above the original one. If we move it slightly, we can see the differences. Let's remove the original image and check the result. It is very important that the outline is continuous, without interruption. We can fix any defects with the Edit Path tools. Once the image is ready, export it in AutoCAD DXF R12 format. Do the same steps for the second image. At the end, we will have two DXF images, one with only the outline of Italy and the other also with the regions. Let's now move on to Eagle, create a new project and immediately go to the board. Select the dimension layer. What is drawn on this layer will define the dimensions of your PCB. Also activate the single layer mode, convenient for editing one layer at a time. To keep cost down, the board will be a maximum of 10 by 10 cm. As a guide, 
I draw a rectangle of these sides. Now we import the image with the outline of Italy. Let's make sure the target layer is 20 dimension. I have not found an easy way to find the right scale factor. By trial and error, I found that the value 4.3 is perfect for this image. Now the outline of our PCB is ready. We can remove the rectangle around it. Now let's import the seal screen of the regions. Modifying only the layer that will be T-Place. We can change the thickness of the line to make it more visible. Select everything. Then set the thickness to 20. And click on the outline while holding down CTRL. If we go back to the dimension layer, we can see the final result. Now let's move on to the very simple schematic. I choose to use some RGB LEDs called SK6812 Mini, which are available on various online stores. These LEDs are very convenient to solder by hand because, despite being very small in size, they have four terminals. We add 20 LEDs connecting them in cascade, the D-out pin connected to the D-in pin of the following LED. Finally, we add a 3-pin connector to bring the power supply, 5V and ground, and the data signal to the board. Place the LEDs and the connector on the board and launch the outer router to make the traces. This is the final result, ready to generate the Gerber files to be sent to the service that will make the PCBs. For this project I use JLC PCB. I always find it fascinating to receive the printer circuit board I designed. Now let's analyze the Arduino sketch. Given the need to download the data from the internet, I choose to use a Wemos D1 board, based on the ESP8266 chip. Let's understand how the data we need is structured. The Civil Protection publishes a file in CSV format, comma separated fields, on GitHub every day. This file contains several fields, including the region code and the number of new cases. Let's start from the region code. In the sketch, I defined an array with the correspondence between this code and the LED relating the same region. For example, the Calabria region has code 18, and the associated LEDs is the fifth. Also in the sketch, I created some constants for the parameters to connect to the Wi-Fi network and for downloading the CSV file. The control of the LEDs is done using Adafruit's excellent new pixel library. The data signal for the LEDs will be generated on pin 14. The definitions are completed with the different thresholds corresponding to the colors green, yellow, orange and red. For example, if the number of new cases is greater than 1000, the region LED will be red, while if it is less than 300, it will be green. The setPixel method applies the logic I've just described.
the data is updated with a frequency defined by the update interval constant. In this case, every 600 seconds or 10 minutes. The update math method is responsible for this update. This method connects to GitHub and downloads the file. After discarding the HTTP headers and the first line of the file, which contains the column headers, the remaining lines are divided into the different fields using the strtalk function. As seen, the third field contains the region code, while the 13 the number of new cases. A small complexity lies in the fact that the file contains two values for the Trentino Alto Adige region. The code you see is used to sum the two values. Finally, the setPixelColor method is called, which, as we already understood, updates the color of the LEDs based on values and thresholds. After so many words, let's finally try the project. Power the Wemos board, and after a few seconds, the regions are colored. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you like, subscribe to the channel and activate the notification to not miss the next ones. Thanks for watching and have fun!